In this video, I am going to show you how I made this toy box for my daughters. I must say, this project has been very special to me as this sparked my interest into woodworking. I'm calling this box a toy box because that's the intended purpose because there's too much mess when it comes to toys in my house. You can really use it for anything around the house. Pillows, bed covers, bed sheets, blankets. It's uh, very highly functional. Now you know what it can do. Now let me show you how I made it. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! I cut this sheet from an 18mm 8x4 plywood sheet. The whole toy box is 15 inches by 30 inches. Here I'm using my miter saw to cut out all four side panels to make the rectangular shape. My table saw is not long enough to cut large boards like this so I found it easier to use my miter saw instead but as you can see the width of the boards are quite uh, large so I have to turn it round and then cut off the pieces. Once it was a manageable size I'm using my crosscut sled to place the panels on top of it and make the cuts. Then I go around cleaning off the edges as you can see here. This helps when it comes to putting the panels together for a much more accurate fit. I have found two pieces of scrap 2x4s that I'm going to use to make the legs for the toy box. I am using my square to mark the height of the legs. I'm using the 2x4 plank of wood to make 2x2 two two legs for the toy box. I'm using the 2 inch side to push up against the fence and then running it through a few times until I get 4 pieces. And that's the 4 legs done. Now I'm doing the pocket holes on all 4 of the side panels. Once I finished with the pocket holes on the small panels, I am now marking out where the pocket holes will go on the longer panels. This avoids the screws from clashing into each other when they are connected to the legs of the toy box. With all the pocket holes now completed, now it's time for assembly. My daughter got wind of the fact that I'm making her a toy box, so she had to get involved. Daddy, we're well, making a toy box. Okay, what should we do now? We need to show it with this. Look, you can do my one. Look. Okay, can, can I use my one and you use your one? <coughs> okay. Should Daddy help? Yeah. How do you do it? Is it a hole? We did it. Now let's do the double. This one is this the piece. <laughs> okay. Done. Okay, look, let's take this off. So this is the side panels being attached to the legs.
so I did that twice for each side. It's really nice to see when your imaginations start coming to life. Now to attach the long panels. I'm using the weight of the long panels to push down onto the legs and using my drill to drive in the screws. This is the last panel. This was the most awkward one as there wasn't enough space to kind of position myself to screw in the pocket holes. And especially while recording, you have to keep one eye on the screen and one eye on the drill. Here I am cutting out two planks that will go and sit underneath the box as braces and as supports for the base of the box. Just a bit of glue on the edges and I then use my nail gun and pin nails on the outer side. My nail gun has a tendency to leave the pin protruding so then I have to always go back to hammer it. So as you can see that's the supports done. Now I am making cuts from the leftover plywood sheet to make the base. Before I will put the base on I decided to put the edge borders on the side panels first. This is just for cosmetic purposes, it just gives it a much more decorative look and design to it. Here I'm making four identical cuts with the stop block to use as stumps at the bottom of the legs. I guess you could call it legs but these are like small planks right at the bottom so it raises it from the ground. I did a curve cut as you can see then once I did that on one of them, I put it up against the other ones and just used it as a template and just repeated the cut. Here I am just adding glue on the base supports which I will then drop the base into the box. Just giving it a quick sand just to make sure everything is smooth and then just dusting it off, getting it ready for painting. 
When I made the cutout for the lid, I made sure to leave a few centimeters on the front, left and the side just to act as the lip, which would be like a safety feature so my kids don't get their fingers caught in when they shut it. I'm just using glue to add the stamps at the bottom you could use um, pocket holes they're thick enough which will make it stronger but I think uh, they should be fine because I'm not intending to move it much this is what happens when you don't have enough clamps extreme time calls for extreme measures So this is how it's looking upside down, thought I'd share it because it looks cool with the braces. This part was particularly exciting for me. This was the first time I'm using a router, first time I even owned a router and I felt it went well. I was a bit nervous with it first. Just another quick sand over just to get things smooth again. Now the first coat I used was just a generic white paint because the wood tends to soak in quite a bit of paint so a good standard white paint is good enough before you add on your colour. While I started on the lid, apparently my daughter started on the whole box. After the white coat was done, I used dabs of acrylic red paint to mix it with white to get the pink effect. Now for the hinges, this is very fiddly but um, I managed to get through it. You can see I propped up the box to make sure the lid is aligned to the hinges. Drilling pilot holes for these small screws is always a good idea just to make sure they don't go wandering around. Now it's complete, let's see if this keeps my house clean. Go, 
Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe as it helps the channel. Check out my other videos for similar projects like this which you will enjoy. Thank you for watching.